Hello there, and welcome to Apex Racing TV and the BSR Kia Club Series in association with Club 73 Karting and XL Designs. My name is Paul Smith, and alongside here is Dan Blake. And, well, we're just in the middle of qualifying at the moment for this first round of the Kia Club Series, which, of course, is a, the feeder series to the uh, BSR TC Pro Series. Um, well, Dan, uh, as we see the drivers going around at the moment, this promises to be an exciting season. It's the second season of this championship, and uh, uh, it, the Kia has always produced good racing. Yeah, as for you, it's on the third on that one, eh? The Kia Optima produces some great racing. We've got 36 drivers currently out on track at the moment qualifying. This series has been full for a long time, I believe. A lot of interest which has been sparked on by the BSR TC Pro Series. You say this is the feeder series, and we can see the BSR TC Pro Series drivers of the future here. There's some very quick drivers, along with ones newer to the car as well, a nice mix. I think that will produce some great racing throughout the field. Absolutely. Uh, just at the moment, as we say, qualifying progressing with uh, Michael Hall currently at the top of the timesheets, but we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, just to quickly go through, we've got uh, two races per, uh, per round and uh, well it's going to be exciting 20 minute races so uh, plenty of action packed racing for us here and well you've had all the drivers they've got their own teams there are a couple of privateers but uh, it's a good spread of, uh, of talent in this field as we say michael hall is, is known to be a quick driver in this car he's previously uh, won races in other kia series uh you've got the former champ the last season's champion magic sakovic he's back uh, defending his title uh ben hackerson of course finished second in the title one of the uh the two people to have had the most wins in the kia club series with four wins uh as they go and uh well dan is there uh is there anybody who you're looking forward to seeing i think mate i'm looking forward to seeing most of the field to be honest uh i haven't seen many of these drivers before so it's gonna be a bit of a learning you woodhouse but also we got the uh the uh the warburton Warburton's, who have actually been sponsored by Warburton's Bread, they each had a £1 voucher off their next purchase of bread, so a bit of a win there for them as well. Okay, so uh, back in, into the last couple of, uh, couple of minutes of the uh, qualifying session here, and as I say, Michael Hall currently in the lead from his teammate Matthew Bunn in the chaotic racing uh, cars and um, uh, their distinctive blue and, uh, blue and white livery, with John Richardson uh, in the ARF team here uh, looking fast as well with Majek Sakovic in fourth at the moment and Chaz Draker, the, uh, the series organiser, he's in fifth. Yeah, Chaz, another one with one of these interesting paint schemes, the eye glazing one, that Dunkin' Donuts tribute. Uh, that's another very inventive paint scheme, I like that one. And also the Club 73, the title sponsors, well, the part title sponsors, uh, it looks like a bit of an old BTCC Honda Accord livery there, so that's another one I'm quite liking at the moment. Yeah, so. Um, just to go through a couple of things, so uh, it's ten round, uh, well, ten, ten meetings of this championship, and well, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, there is a drop score uh, during the season for the drivers, so if there is somebody who happens to miss a round of the championship, then they won't be out of the championship running. So uh, it's a good way of making sure that everybody, see, like if they have uh, any technical issues, like we apparently uh, are having at the moment with our stream, we do apologize about this, but we will get this back up and running as soon as possible before the race. Uh, yeah, it gives people the opportunity if they say like have things happening or if they have technical problems to be able to drop a score and stay competitive in the championship. Yeah, it's something which will bring the series a bit more. It's a feature series of BSR TC Pro Series, so not quite up to those same sort of levels. Obviously, the BSR TC Pro Series are on no drop scores, and may maybe this is a trial for BSR TC Pro Series in the future, having a drop round just to see how it goes. And yeah, I think it is good to have a drop round because life can take over sometimes, other things can happen unexpected, and it is nice to be able to race without knowing that you might actually be able to drop a score. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out throughout the course of the season. 
I know I'd have appreciated a drop score, a drop round in the uh, in the Pro Series. Of course, me, myself, Paul Smith, and Dan Blake, uh, we are Pro Series drivers in the BSRTC. That's coming up to uh, it's, it's just started its showdown, so uh, uh, it's really getting interesting with that. You can watch that live every Thursday night on uh, Apex Racing TV, and of course, the highlights a couple of weeks later on Motors TV on a Tuesday night for that series. But we're just coming up to the end of qualifying, so uh, will anyone be able to beat that? Uh, beat the lap times at the moment because uh, there's quite a few that are um, trying but uh, quite a lot in the pits actually so uh, just finishing off qualifying I'm just having a look Max Wright is coming over the line he's uh, he's a bit further down can he improve from a 31.3 unfortunately he can't so uh, Max not able to improve the times and uh, is, is there any surprises here in terms of uh, of, of of times of uh, people in this in this qualifying session, this first qualifying session of the season. Yeah, so I was just seeing an improvement from Dennis Sherp, a 130.743, but someone in exactly the same time as one of my former teammates, Jim Flanagan. So uh, another improvement there. But yeah, the qualifying times are quite interesting. There's some names at the front which I've not seen before, and also people who expect to be nearer the front, like Ben Hackerson. He's struggling a little bit I'd say he's in 10th position he may be expecting to be a little bit higher Joe Changli 11th place as well it's another one of the early season uh, one of the people that he thought would be near the front but as you see Michael Hall on pole position by just uh, just under a tenth of a second so a good run from Michael Hall and you got John Richardson there alongside there as well so on um, third place so a big grid of cars and as you can see we got throughout the top 10 people who have been in a BSR Pro Series as well Jay Wright, got Ben Hackerson, Chaz Draycott Michael Hall has been in there as well so there's a, there's a mix of Pro Series drivers and those who haven't been in there as well so I think uh, the first turn at Paddock Hill is going to be very interesting uh, on the first lap The top 20 of this field are covered by one second that's how close this uh, this pack is and even then you know, the the cars that are really close so it's going to be fantastic chance as we're getting ready for the race so just to quickly go through your grid on the front row and pole position michael hall with a 129 339 with matthew bunn his teammate in second place he'll be hoping that he can uh, help out michael or maybe matthew getting the win there john c richardson in third place with majek sakovic in fourth chas drake up in fifth place philip johansson in sixth Clinton Bell in 7th place, Ian Roskull in 8th with Jay Wright, former BSRTC Pro Series driver in ninth, and another former BSRTC driver joining him on that 5th uh, that row, that's Benjamin Hackerson and well where other cars are lining up and well Paddock Hill Bend it's notorious, there can be issues there, um, is it a case of just taking it easy Dan? I don't think these drivers know the meaning of taking it easy as we know from the Pro Series. It's a whole a whole different mentality, really. But uh, I think we'll have to watch them, not just see Paddock Hill, Druids and Graham Hill as well. They they are very tight round there as well. So I think I'll take half a lap, maybe even a full lap, just to get a bit of a, a bit of order. Because I think the first half a lap or so may have the potential to be quite spicy and quite action-packed. Drivers certainly will be side by side through the first few corners of this race as they all battle it out for position. And well, it's the Grand Prix layout of uh, Brands Hatch. They've got 2.4 miles per lap, so they'll all be uh, battling it out all the way through this. Like we say, 20 minute race, so uh, not a lot of time for things to get done. So uh, the drivers will be pushing hard to get that win or as get a good result as possible. So we're just waiting now for the lights now the lights will turn to red the drivers the engines will raise as we're getting ready for the start of the bsr yeah, club series season two and oh, away jump we start. go there's a jump start there number from, seven and that is benjamin hackerson getting a jump start so oh collision crashing at the oh, back dear. as well uh, well, we were fearing that it would get to the first corner when there was an incident, but unfortunately it happened nearer the back as uh, the rest of the field still travelling up through. So, we've got Michael Hall and Hackerson in the lead at the moment, but surely he'll have a penalty. Michael Hall second with Matthew Bunn, John Richardson down there in fourth place with Majek Sakovic making a move up to fifth with Chas Draycott down there to sixth place at the moment, and well... Apart from that little incident at the start there, everybody's seeming to get through so far, Dan. 
Yeah, a very good start from them. I think Ben Hackerson, once he knew he had a jump start, he decided that he would go because he knew that he was going to get a penalty anyway. So his thinking was, well, if I've done it, I'm going to get a penalty. I need to just drive on and that will minimize the effect of his penalty. So Benjamin Hackerson will have to come in, I think, for a penalty pretty surely. That was a massive jump start. But the rest of the field seem to have, apart from the start line, seem to have come through OK at the moment. Michael Hall with Matt Bunn right on his rear bumper. Just looking, but you wouldn't have thought with being teammates that they would uh, have a battle. But then again, this is Kia's. We, we never know what will happen in this. No, exactly. And the first person you want to beat is your teammate. So uh, I think the chaotic racing, uh, Matthew Bunn, Giving a, little, uh, giving a little of a move there to say he's there. And is Hackerson going to come in the pitch? Yes, he is. So Hackerson will serve that pit lane penalty. Not will let Michael Hall take the lead of the race. So as we say, at the end of the first lap now, Michael Hall in the lead with Matthew Bunn in second place. John Richardson in third, under pressure from Majek Sekovic, who's under pressure from Chaz Draycott into Paddock Hill Bend. As Philip Johansson in uh, sixth place at the moment with Clinton Bell right behind him, his teammate in those... Uh, those uh, Honda looking colours there with Jay Wright then in 8th place, Ian Roskill behind him, he's trying to find a way past Jay at the moment, Liam Atkins there bringing up the uh, top 10 and well it's it, there's, there's small packs appearing at the moment in this field with the front two just trying to get away at the moment. Yeah there's experienced front two, Michael Hall and Matthew Bunn trying to gap the rest of the field but John Richardson and Magic Sagrett's not letting them get away. There's a battle further back, I saw, between Neil Bamber and Adam Gosling. Bamber in 11th and Gosling in 12th. They've got Andrew Woodhouse not far behind them as well. Don't forget Andrew Woodhouse, a BSR, BSR TC Pro Series winner. So Andrew Woodhouse has won in the BSR TC, so he's not one to count out for a good finish either. Philip Johansson's made it past uh, J, uh, Chas Draycott now, um, through down Pilgrim's Drop into uh, Hawthorne. He made that move stick, so Philip Johansson moving up to fifth place in that uh, Club 73 Kia. But Chas Draycott is all over the back of him, trying to get past. He's looking down the inside towards Clark Curve, but yeah, he can't really make it through there. It's not really a best overtaking spot. You want to get the run out of Clark now. And down the start and finish straight, he's looking to the outside as Chas Draycott trying to get round the outside of Philip Johansson. Can he make it round the outside? It's going to be a tall order, but will he get the cut back? No, he's run wide as Chaz, and that allows Philip Johansson's teammate, Clinton Bell, to get right on the tail, Chaz. Yeah, Clinton Bell, Danny inside, maybe Dentry is not going to make the move there. Good, good defending there from Chaz Jacob, but Chaz Jacob is now down to six for Clinton Bell in seventh. And then the battle for eighth place being led by Jay Wright. He's got Ian Roskill, Liam Atkins. And Neil Bamber, who's now shaking off the attention of Adam Gosling, is now looking ahead and onto the back of that pack. But as we say at the front, Matthew, it's Michael Hall and Matthew Bunn. Cars are involved, I think, in the first lap collision. We've got Tristan Bodice, Charlie Richardson, Neil Rocks and Ben Warburton, amongst others. Ah, uh, the uh, Ben Warburton was a little bit underdone there. Uh, didn't have enough time to... Be I'm sorry, I do apologise about the uh, making reference, but there anyway. So at the front, Michael Hall from Matthew Bunn, the two teammates, will they battle it out or will they just uh, keep in order and try and get as good a points, maximum points for that team? Because there is a team championship as well. Uh, if the teams have three cars, then the top two cars of that team will score points for the team in that championship. So as we're going down now who we've got we've got this battle still going on with Philip Johansson Chaz Draycott and Clinton Bell battling away Clinton Bell's trying to get past Chaz around the outside of Clark Curve that's going to be an incredible Ooh. move they've been making Chaz Draycott just holding out to the side of him and Clinton Bell is through that's a that's an impressive move around the outside from Clinton very impressive but Draycott now on the defensive from Jay Wright in that Wright Motorsport car he's maybe going to be the next one to try and have a go at Chaz Draycott Chaz Blunt the curb there going through Paddock Hill, lost him a bit of time. And there's also a third car involved in that little scuffle. That's going to be Ian Roskull as well. So a big battle forming here behind them there, two abreast as well. Neil Bamba on the outside of the car of Liam Atkins of Fair Race Motorsport. Atkins has the lead for that one, but Bamba has a better exit coming out of Graham Hill Bend. But now as they come towards the GP loop, another move maybe putting inside from Bamba. He's not quite going to make it though. Those going to try and stick it around the outside as they come down Pilgrim's Drop. So that'll be one they're going to try and sort out on the GP loop. And that is for the last place in the top 10. 
Liam Adkins on the right uh, of uh, Neil Bamba looking at the inside going into Hawthorne Neil Bamba deciding to just get out of that one uh, but will he get the cut back going into the next corner and he's going to have a look down the inside here into Westfield but can't quite make it now as they go down into Dingle Dell and uh, well it's just action all the way across with uh, also Adam Gosling getting onto the back of this oh we're on the grass Bamba. there for Bamba that was a mistake there from Neil Bamba as he came into Dingle Dell he's been able to hold on to it and then he a couple of places Andrew Woodhouse there round trying to go around the outside but it means he'll have the inside for clear ways but he's going to back in and uh, I think that's good for him to be in front of those uh, goggle, this, the goggle eyes of Andrew Woodhouse and not <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to be behind Andrew not with that paint livery um, on that car our, uh, our Apex TV uh, colleague there is Jay Wright has made it down the inside of Chas Draycott now into Paddock Hill Bend. So Chas Draycott going backwards a little bit in this race so far. Is he is he just a bit uh, you know has, has he got a bit uh, you know a bit excited maybe and he's not quite running right? Uh, does he need to just settle down into this down? Yeah, Chas I think was very excited about this series start on I think to uh, to do today and the, and the previous week. You know that something he's really proud of, and I think he want to put as good a performance as possible in like all these drivers. And now Jay well, Wright's Jay gone wide, wide, so that's going to give him a chance to get the position. But on the back of him, he's got Ian Roscoe as well. And that's a new new name for me in the key area. Roscoe and he's showing up particularly well behind Chas Jaycott and Jay Wright. I think is just going behind. Yeah, so Jay Wright didn't lose that to Liam Atkins. So that put Jay Wright down into ninth place to Adam Gosling in that WD40 car. And then you've got Neil Bamba and Andrew Woodhouse. But at the front, it looks like Michael Hall still just has a lead over Matthew Blum. But that is now starting to catch up because John Richardson and Magic Sagrit's now right on the back of this chaotic racing pair. Yeah, John Richardson, who was one of the uh, title contenders last season in the first season of this Kia Club Series, uh, ended up losing out to uh, Ben Hackerson and Magic Sakovic uh, that last season. But he is all over the back of Matt Bunn now. He's got the better run out of Clark Curve. Matt Bunn having to go defensive going into Paddock. Can he keep him behind? John Richardson going down the inside. And that is very late on the brakes. Can Bunn get the cut back and go into the inside of Druids? No. And look behind the Magic Sakovic. Oh, getting contact there between the three of them, and well, it's, it's he's managed to keep it stick as Richardson, good outbreaking move into Paddock Hill Bend. Yeah, fantastic move there for John Richardson, and I don't think Matthew Bunn's finished him yet, but yeah, as you say, that was a great move from Richardson, Danny, inside of Paddock Hill. These drivers have got to watch out, they like the BSR TC Pro Series, it is instant limit, it is 12x in this series, so... They'll have to try not to rack those up. But behind these leading four, it's the two Club 73 teammates together. Now, Clinton Bell has found his way past Philip Johansson. So those two have switched positions on this lap. Although coming down Pilgrim's drop, Johansson's not ready to let that one drop. No, absolutely. Johansson is trying his utmost, one, to get past his teammate, but two, not to make contact with the teammate as well, because it is an unforgivable sin, is that as ahead of them. Sakovic is still trying to get round Matt Bunn, and these two have dropped back off of uh, Richardson and Hall. So Hall and Richardson making a break for it now. Uh, they're obviously got a little bit more pace than these two while they're battling away. Sakovic trying to get past, past Bunn because uh, he obviously feels that he's a faster, faster car at the moment. Yeah, Magic Sagrits has last up a 130.021. Matty Bunn, a 130.393. So a couple of tenths quicker there was Magic Sagrits. And he saw what John Richardson did on the previous lap. We've had just under 10 minutes as he crossed the line. Nine minutes and five seconds. So we're still in the first half of this race. Sagrits tries to go around the outside. What he tries to do now is get the cut back out of Paddock Hill Bend towards Jewett. A bun on the gravel there. That's going to give him the opportunity to go down the inside, down into Jewett. And Magic Sagrits will make that one stick. So Magic Sagrits now has a final place on the podium. That is now third place. And he can now begin to chase down John Richardson again. Yeah, Matt Bunn, he'll be trying everything to stay on the back of Magic and trying to get that place back, but I think Magic Sekovic may just have that spot sealed. And behind them, Johansson, Clinton Bell, Chaz Draycott, Neon Roskill all together. There's less, but there's about a second covering these four cars. And behind them, Jay Wright and uh, Liam Atkins are closing up to this group as well, so they're not giving up. Liam Atkins over the grass trying to go past Jay Wright down Pilgrim's Drop. Yeah, that's not going to work, but those two Club 73 cars battling each other has now enabled the cars from seventh back to have a bit of a go, especially Chaz Draycott and Ian Roskill. So that's now a four car battle. Then behind the car of Adam Gosling, we've got a bit of a battle here as well. Andrew Woodhouse has gone round the outside of Neil Bamber. A great move there from Andrew Woodhouse. So he's moved himself now 
up into 12th place. And also part of that battle is Roy Verveverke as well, another driver we've seen in previous series. Oh, it's a car off as well. Gosling. Yeah, the 219 of Gosling. And now that's going to make a bit of interesting racing because Andrew Woodhouse will now be on the inside. And as they come down towards clearways, Andrew Woodhouse, if he can break a little bit later, should have that move done. And Andrew Woodhouse has braked a little bit later, but backs out of it. And that is very, very close now between these four drivers. And you don't know where to look at the moment at Brands Hatch. There is so much action going on throughout the field. That's it, Woodhouse and Bamba side by side, Gosler just in front of them, Woodhouse managing to keep it inside, Bamba's run wide, that'll allow Roy Viverka to get there, but here comes Woodhouse down the inside towards Druids, can he be later on the brakes and keep it down the inside, Gosling's keeping it, he's hanging it out around the outside, can he get the better run down into Graham Hill Bend, just a late onto the brakes, round Graham Hill Bend, no contact still as Woodhouse, round the outside because Gosling got a poor exit out of Graham Hill Bend, he's through Viverka. Past Three Bamba. wide nearly behind there between Verke, Bamba and Gosling. Contact there between Gosling and Bamba. And what this has allowed is another two participants to get involved in that battle. That's Neil Clark and Pete Howard. And if they keep on driving like this, also James Leggett could find himself onto the back of this as well very soon. So we could have a massive rumble here in the midfield. As you say, it's, it's action all across the field. Michael Hall still in the lead, but only 0.5 of a second ahead of John Richardson, so we've got to keep an eye out for that. Majek Sakovic in third place with Matt Bunn. He's 0.5 of a second behind him, but then this epic battle going on at the moment. Clinton Bell in fifth place. Philip Johansson in sixth. Chas Raycott in seventh. Ian Roskell in eighth. With Jay Wright just lurking about. Well, actually, no, it's not Jay Wright behind him. It's Liam Atkins. So Liam Atkins has made it past Jay Wright on this uh, this lap so uh fail race racing uh, doing a good job moving forward in this race is johansson and draycott side by side in front of them it's a paddock hill ben and chase draycott makes it around the outside can he hold it though johansson johansson down the inside through the exit of paddock hill he's got the entry into druids can he make it stick Chas Draycott trying to hold on to that place, but Johansson managing to get back past at the uh, the series organiser, Chas Draycott. And well, the positions end up staying the same, but Clinton Bell, he, he's laughing, he's uh, pulling away. Yeah, Clinton Bell went a bit wide there coming out of Graham Hill, and that's allowed Philip Johansson to catch him up again. But that's battle between the Johansson and Draycott, it's allowed Ian Roskell, Liam Atkins, and Jay Wright onto the back of them as well. So this is a good train. And also we have that other train, Andrew Woodhouse though, starting to pull away a little bit, but that's a big train behind him. We've got Verva Verke, Neil Bamba, Adam Gosling, Neil Clark, Pete Howard, and now James Leggett, as I said, might be on the back of that. He is definitely closing in on those. So that is another battle on track. But yeah, Clinton Bell will be hoping to get away now the rest of them are fighting in that Club 73 machine. Michael Hall in the lead, it's just 0.3 of a second between him and John Richardson, so the battle for the lead at the moment is intensifying, John Richardson has just been gradually catching up to Michael Hall, he was about one and a half tenths faster in that last lap, and well, are the tyres going off, is Michael Hall a little bit aggressive on his front tyres, because that can affect these Kias. Yeah, we're coming into the second half, we're well into the second half of the race now, we've had about 13 and a half minutes, so we're coming on the closing stage of this race, and tire, looking after the tyres is something that does play a factor in the Kia Optima, as we know, so it looks like Michael Hall may have gone a little bit too far, but he's in the lead at the moment, so he can't be doing anything too badly, but uh, John Richardson will be hoping to pile on that pressure in the last quarter of the race, and they've, those two, she say, have pulled away from Matthew Bunn, and Magic Sagwitz, Magic Sagwitz in third, Matthew Bunn in fourth. And there's a five second gap back to that battle we're looking at between Clinton Bell, Philip Johansson, Chaz Draycott, and uh, Ian Roskell. Just the, that, that's how far behind they are, just when you speak like that. So uh, I can see a lot of cars there in a short space of time. Absolutely, as uh, well, Andrew Woodhouse, as we say, is just pulling out a little bit of a gap now over that Roy Viverke, uh, Neil Bamber, and Adam Goslin battle. But yeah, Liam Atkins, he's just a dropped off the back of Ian Roskell at the moment, as uh, Roskell's dropped off the back of Chas Draycott. So, uh, Clinton Bell, Johansson, and Draycott just pulling a tiny little bit of a gap um, over the those other cars. So, uh, maybe rather than battling away, just working together, try and pull them away from the threat from behind. Yeah, so they can pull away a bit of a gap and make it a bit more easier for them. Draycott, Draycott, Draycott wide. Yeah, Draycott very wide there on the exit of Dingle Down. That's going to compromise him, and that could allow Ian Roskell the chance to get even further behind that uh, eye glazing car. Chasbury on the back of the. Uh, but also behind Jay Wright is going to try and make a little move here on uh, Liam Atkins in the fail race machine, although 
if these two keep on fighting, they're going to jump off that main pack, so they may want to work together for a little bit. Also worth noting that with the current uh, the rules about the reverse grid, at the moment, it would be Alex Bristow on pole position. As at the moment, Jay Wright down the inside of Liam Atkins makes a stick. Both of them go wide, but Jay Wright makes that position up. So up to ninth place is Jay Wright, although Liam Atkins not willing to give that one up very easily. Tried to stick his nose down the inside of Wright, going into Druids, but Jay Wright does have that position for the moment. Absolutely. So uh, Liam Atkins giving Jay, uh, giving Jay Wright the room there, and is that the experience of uh, of Jay Wright from running in the Pro Series for most of this season? Is that a, a bit of experience there showing in this Kia that uh, he's able to get that sort of move done? Yeah, I think that does help a lot. Jay Wright obviously raced with the Pro Series, and I think he did learn a lot from that, as you would do racing with uh, some of the drivers in the Pro Series. There are some very experienced and talented drivers there, so. Anything that you can learn from there coming back down here definitely will give you a bit of an upper hand, I think. But now Jay Wright's gone past Liam Atkins. His next uh, target is going to be the Carby and Ross School to see if he can catch up to them. John Richardson is all over the rear bumper of Michael Hall right now for the race lead at the moment. And well, John, he's got to pick his moment. He's still got a, about three or four minutes left in this, uh, in this race. So uh, he doesn't have to rush, but you need to really get a move on now. If you're gonna put a put a move on Michael as uh, yeah. down the south is straight to go. Yeah, I think at the moment Lucas is in a good place at the moment. We've just got over three minutes to go, so two, maybe three laps to go. You don't want to show your hand too early there, of course, Paul. So John Richardson doing the right thing is to try and force a mistake out of Michael Hall first, I think, before he goes for a move. Because some drivers are putting a pressure on them. They may that make that mistake, and with John Richardson as close to Michael Hall as he is, the slightest little uh, slip up from Michael Hall, well, I think that John Richardson will be straight past in that ARF car, but. In the last couple of laps, I think we may see John Richardson be a bit more attacking. He's got quite a gap back now to Magic Sakharik's a second and a half, so he can afford to be a little bit adventurous, I think, in the closing stages. Yeah, maybe pull one or two moves on Michael Hall. I'm just looking back, Clinton Bell is, I don't know how he's doing this, but he's managing to hang on to this fifth place at the moment with this gaggle of cars behind him. Uh, they're all still battling away. There's only uh, 0.6 of a second between Johans, uh, Clinton Bell, Johansson and Drake at the moment with Roskell, Wright and uh, Liam Atkins all behind them. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse not really making uh, much progress on them. He seems to be... Uh, set in that 11th place at the moment but uh, behind Andrew of course is Roy Viverke, Neil Bamba and Adam Gosling. Adam Gosling having a look there on the back of Bamba but managing to, he's just staying behind at the moment through Dingle Dell and through Sheen Corner. Yeah I think Woodhouse would be quite happy at the moment to be the front of this queue because it means he can you can see the cars in front. I don't think he's going to catch them, but it's going to allow him. He's not under so much pressure. He's pulling the look out. Clint, Clint, uh, sorry about that. Uh, Chas Draycott has made it past Clinton Bell and Philip Johansson as well. He's having a look down the inside of his teammate. So that's a change for position. Chas Draycott now up into that fifth place as Johansson makes it down the inside of Clinton Bell. It's a sick behind them. It's just a little touch of contact as Ian Roskell just loses a little bit of control Ooh. through Paddock and this. Liam Atkins having a look on Jay Wright as well. It's all happening now. Johansson having to protect his place from Clinton Bell and, well, Bell having to just slot in behind him through Graham Hill Bend. Yeah, coming towards the end of the race, and I think the drivers' mentalities are changing a little bit now. Where earlier in the race, they may have been a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more relaxed. I think now we are going to see full intensity. And if Liam Atkins uh, always was cut grass a little bit there, Clinton Bell. this fighting pack that is going to be an absolutely barnstorming last couple of laps if we have about 10 cars fighting for that position but Woodhouse definitely getting closer to Liam Atkins but Travis Drake got there the opportunistic move there you saw the mistake it looks like there from Clinton Bell and now up into fifth place but Johansson is not going to let him have it pretty easy absolutely as we're well I would say that we're coming on to start the last lap of this race there's only about 20 seconds left as they're going across the line Michael Hall still in the lead he's been in the lead pretty much all of this race apart from when Hackerson uh, made the jump start and ended up in the lead but uh, Hall now having to battle away he's only 0.2 of a second ahead of John who's trying every
down the inside into Drew. It's Jay Wright's trying to follow Ruskell as well. And well, Chas Draycott is getting freight trains back here as he's trying to keep ahead of Jay Wright. Jay Wright mm. getting just a little bit into the side of Draycott. And that's bringing Liam Atkins into this now. Draycott now trying to make the move back on uh, Ruskell, but he's managed to stay ahead of him as well. Oh. Contact Jay Wright and Chas Draycott. And oh no, it looks like Draycott's being disqualified. Oh, it's very unfortunate there for Chaz Draycott, but we were talking about pressure, and it looks like coming in this paddock here with Chaz Draycott made a mistake, and unfortunately it's, it's led to his demise as far as this race is concerned with disqualification. But one man who hasn't had any trouble with pressure so far is Michael Hall. They're John Richardson on the grass there on the exit of Dingle Dale, but Michael Hall's got one more corner to go, then he'll take the first victory of the season. Absolutely now, so coming, as I said, towards clear ways. Can John Richardson do anything you just think is a bit too far back here? Down through Jim Clark now and down along the start finish straight and Michael Hall will take the victory in this first round of the BSR Kia Club Series with John Richardson in second, Magic Sakovic in third, Matthew Bunn with a solid fourth place after starting second uh, well Philip Johansson will come across in fifth with Clinton Bell in sixth, uh, Ian Roskell in seventh Jay Wright in 8th, Andrew Woodhouse ended up in ninth place through all of that. Roy Viverke rounds out your 10, Neil Bamber finishing 11th, Adam Gosling 12th, Liam Atkins fell down to 13th there because of that incident, uh, getting involved with Chaz and with uh, it was uh, Jay Wright. Jay Wright, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brain just went blank there. Uh, Neil Clark ended up 14th. Pete Harrod in 15th. James Leggett in 16th. Dennis Sherp in 17th. Marcus Hackman in 18th. Sam Reed in the other Club 73 car in 19th. Max Wright in 20th. Ben Hackerson, after serving his penalty, 21st place 45 seconds behind the winner so that's how much that uh, jump start cost him Christopher Sherburn in uh, 22nd place with Stuart Atkinson in 23rd uh, Hayao John Lee in 24th David Crozier in 25th Chas Draycott is classified as, oh well no, no it's Michael Jones in 6th Robert Erling in 27th Jim Flanagan what happened to him in that race? He's finished uh, 28th. Alex Bristow, the last of the lead lap runners, so he'll be on pole position for the second race. He finishes 29th. And yeah, Chaz Draycott, disqualified, ends up one lap down. The other cars one lap down, Perry Warburton, Neil Rocks, Charlie Richardson, and then you've got the runners who didn't finish, Trevor Blackburn, Ben Warburton, and uh, Tristan Bodis. So, uh, Dan, I, was, I don't know about you, but I'm breathless, for, breathless from that first race. Fantastic action from the BSR Club Series there. And just looked at that last lap incident between Jay Wright and Chaz Draycott. I think Jay Wright may get a protest for that one. I think he may be a little bit optimistic, but he saw the gap. But unfortunately, didn't quite work out there for Jay Wright. So that's probably something the stewards look at. And you said about the Warburtons, I think they'll be hoping to get like a hot knife through butter in that second race. Because they're starting near the back of the field, so... They'll start from 31st and 35th, Ben and 35th and Perry 31st, but a fantastic action on the way through. We didn't really see much of the leaders, Michael Hall and John Richardson. They are very closely battled, closely battling together. We had it throughout the field, that battle from 5th onwards, really, when we had Draycott, Johansson, Bell, etc. And I said about Woodhouse catching onto the back of that train, and he, he, did, he did catch up to them with that last lap drama. So Andrew Woodhouse and Moy Verke from that second group getting past... Uh, Liam Atkins, Adam Neil Bamba and Adam Gosling and all throughout the race some fantastic action there and this BSR Club Series really proving that uh, it's providing just as much action as its big brother the BSR TC Pro Series and that second race could be very interesting with all the some of the fans, all the, obviously with the reverse grid, people like Michael Hall, John Richardson, they'll be coming back from the 29th, 28th place. And I think this second race, we thought the first race was good, I think the second one's going to be even better. I'm just having a look back at the start because it was just absolute chaos um, further back. I'm just trying to find out who it was who was actually involved in that. Uh, and it looks like it was one of the... Uh, chaotic <laughs> rather apt one of the chaotic cars uh, Alex Bristow was just a little bit slow away from the line at the start others managing to get past him uh, and then just chaos ensued behind him as well Charlie Richardson I think broke to avoid it 
and one of the Warburtons, uh, which was Perry Warburton, just ended up unsighted on the brakes and bang, and it all just kicked off from there. Yeah, very unfortunate there that we had that, and yeah, it it was where Bristow got the slow start, and it just saw Constantina's up. That's the sort of risk you have with a big field like this, and unfortunately, it took out six or seven cars there, and some of those involved was Jim, Jim Flanagan. We said that he was further down. He was one of the cars involved in that as well. So unfortunate for Jim. One of his other teammates as well was involved in that in the the you know, the, the Affinity cars. I think it was. Uh, Trevor Blackburn, he was involved in that as well. So quite a few cars involved there, and I think it probably was on the verge of a safety car. If there's any more cars involved, I think the safety car may have been thrown, but I think they made the right decision to carry on because although there was a few cars involved, I think most of them were able to carry on. So it wasn't a, a big, it was a big crash, but not as big, not big, not quite big enough to bring out the safety car. So yeah, so uh, as we can see, that that was the uh, the first round of the BSR Kia Club Series, and well, we'll have race two coming up shortly. Uh, don't forget that this series is brought to you by Club Seventy Three Karting and XL Designs, and it's live here on Apex Racing TV. So we'll go away for a, for a couple of commercial breaks, and then once we come back, we'll be ready for that second race. So do join us in a few minutes' time here on Apex Racing TV. Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. 
Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger. Until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. the outside contact made 56 slides in it and four who's oh, gonna be in the strife did even give it to ryan truex truex is your winner over tandy
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. in the outside contact mate 56 slides in and a four who's oh, gonna be in this drive dead even give it to ryan truex truex is your winner over tandy Hello and welcome back to the BSR Kia Club Series here live on Apex Racing TV in association with Club 73 Karting and XL Designs. And my name is Paul Smith, alongside me once again is Dan Blake and well, 
After a, uh, a breathtaking and breathless first race, um, this reverse grid should see uh, even more exciting racing down. It's going to be interesting in the, in the very least. I think that in that first race we saw that the BSR Club Series provides great racing, very close racing, and it'll be interesting to see how the likes of Michael Hall, John Richardson, uh, Matthew Byrne will be able to get through that pack. Then there's also people a bit further down that first race, like Ben Hackerson, the reverse grid will probably pursue him a little bit better, of course, and that's that's the dynamic we've got to look for. It's like with the BSR Pro Series, when you get that reverse uh, first grid and the Wheel of Fortune, uh, you never know what's quite going to happen, so if it's anything like the Wheel of Fortune in the reverse races in the Pro Series, uh, I think this will be, uh, I thought race one was good, this one's going to be off the wall, I think this is going to be uh, certainly the highlight of the night, I think. Absolutely. I mean, we've we both raced at this track in the uh, the BSR Pro Series, and you raced here in uh, in your Hyundai as well in real life. I've raced on the Indy circuit, not on the GP circuit, but yeah, uh, there's definitely it, the overtaking places is there's quite a few, which is good as well. We've seen overtaking being done at Paddock, at Druid, at Graham Hill, in that last race, also going on Surtees down towards the the back straight as well. So. There's a lot of overtaking opportunities, which I think brings out the best in these car in the series. And of course, the beauty of this track is because of the flow that it has, and because of um, you know, it's not the narrowest of tracks either in in terms of British tracks. So you're able to run too wide through so many of these corners, and you know, so even if somebody's say got past you, you can either get a cutback or you can be still alongside them and uh, and be able to make that move back past them. So uh, just because you lose a place doesn't mean that you've completely lost it. You know, you still got a chance to come back. Yeah, we saw the cutback being utilised by Magic Sagowitz in the first race. We got past Matthew Byrne. Matthew, uh, we saw Magic go a little bit further, wider on the entry of Paddock Hill. And then, then we saw Matthew Byrne go across the gravel a little bit, and that gave Magic Sagowitz the opportunity to go down the inside of Jewards. And that's exactly what we're talking about, really. There are plenty of positions where maybe you don't have to be going to the corner, but give it a few, few hundred feet up to the next one, you can be right alongside and again in that position back. Magic Sakovic, of course, the man who has a magic sandwich. So, as we're coming towards the end of the uh, the warm up here, and uh, well, it's the same conditions as the first race, and uh, yeah, so the drivers will have a bit more experience. There's a bit more uh, rubber down on the road now from that first race. So, uh, be interested to see how uh, how drivers cope with that extra bit of grip. You know, will it, will it give them a bit more confidence to make those moves. Yeah, I think it's something that has a fact. Obviously, dynamic tracks, uh, new up to iRacing this season, they definitely make a difference, and I think it will on the racing. But I think one of the drivers that for this race I think will have a good time of it is Jim Flanagan. He's, he's starting second on the grid as a result of being involved in that first corner collision, in well, the first start line collision in race one. And I think Jim Flanagan starting from the front is going to be is going to get a good finish. He, I'm hoping he can get a win out of this race, Jim Flanagan. But we'll have to see. What happens there? Jim deserves a good result. He's uh, had a, a very tough time of it in this in the first race, so for Jim to come back and take victory will be good for him. And I think the, from the from the front row, it's going to be hard for anyone to uh, to drop him down a few places. I think because we've seen him in BSRTC, he's to, he's raced in the top 10, 15 there. So if Jim Flanagan can bring the pace we know he's got, then I think for as far as this race goes, he could have a very good one. Uh, now, we've heard it many times that sometimes people prefer to start second place here at Brands Hatch because of the hill um, on the start line. Have, have you ever noticed that racing here on, on iRacing or in real life that, that you can get an advantage getting away? Because it is kind of on the racing line as well. Yes, to a certain extent. I know when I race there in the Hyundai, also, that, that Paddock Hill bend, you don't know how high it is until you're at the... <laughs> that is one of the true uh, greatest things in British motorsport, Paddock Hill bend. It is a lot more steeper than it looks on the uh, on the TV and on iRace, I can tell you that. It feels like you're on a little mini roller coaster, but yeah. On the outside, I've seen cars make a better start than on the inside as well, so definitely something to factor in and on the race. and. I think we've got the grid now. It's uh, Alex Bristow on pole, Jim Flanagan second, Robert Erlings in third, Michael Jones fourth, David Crozier fifth, Hio Changley sixth, Stuart Atkinson seventh, Chris Sherburn eighth, Ben Hackerson ninth. So Ben Hackerson ninth after his drive his penalty, and Max Wright in ten. There's a couple of drivers there who could have quite a good day.
Yeah, absolutely. They're uh, looking through this field here. As I say, it's going to be interesting to see uh, the likes of uh, Michael Hall, the race winner from last race, uh, John Richardson, Majek Sakovic trying to make their way through. Clinton Bell, you know, he was pulling a few moves along with Philip Johansson and his teammates, so uh, they could make them maybe make their way through. And uh, yeah, let's not forget our uh, BSRTC commentating colleague, Andrew Woodhouse, as well. He, he made his way up through that last race. So uh, certainly a few people to look out for as we get ready for the start of this race so drivers now looking towards the starting gantry the red lights will come on and the engine revs raise as we get ready for another 20 minutes around brown touch and away we go and oh, Alex Bristow, Bristow Bristow off a start slow again. start oh, oh he's dear been, he's been left oh, and there's a big no. big collision there it's one of the uh Hackerson. T races and a yellow flag up surprisingly the the uh the caution has come out there and well that was the uh, yeah the number seven car of Hackerson he was so he, we was we thought he'd have a good chance of getting a good start and making his way through but unfortunately completely blind to uh Alex Bristow not getting away there yeah strange because I'm not the first I think uh, Alex Bristow had problems getting away in the first one as well so Unfortunate that he was starting on pole this time. I think the rest of the field did an extremely good job. I think it was only Hackerson that hit him. So great credit to the rest of the field there. But what this means is the safety car comes out. We've got Jim Flanagan in the lead. Second is Michael Jones. Third, Hugh Chang Lee. Fourth, David Crozier. And fifth is Stuart Atkinson. So unfortunately, we've got the safety car out early. But I don't think, in fact, that there was too many cars involved in that accident. Yeah, I'm just looking at back at that now. Just... Uh just while we're under the safety car and uh, Alex Bristol just seems to just he doesn't get away then the car just seems to leap forward like it wasn't in gear and then he just doesn't pull away at all you know it's as if there's something maybe wrong uh, something's happened to his equipment there that's that's caused him to not be able to get away from uh, from the lost outline of course you know mechanical failures can happen in sim racing as well as in real life Yes, yeah, so you could have having of having something happen on the track, of course, in real life. So, unfortunately for Alex Bristow that he's had this, but what it does mean now, unfortunately, is we're going to lose some time as far as the race goes as well. We can't add the time on after, unfortunately. It's not like the touring cars where you get three extra laps or extra laps with a safety car. This is going to eat into the race time, but I don't think Jim Flanagan is going to mind that, considering he's leading. Uh, but unfortunately, it also means that some of our front runners from the first race are going to have less time to get up there as well. Well, so as, as you say, Jim Flanagan in that team match car uh, in first place. Michael Jones in second. Hayao Chan Lee in third place uh, with David Crozier in fourth. And, well, those team mad drivers, they're first and fourth. So uh, they, they must be hoping for a, a good restart and to be able to uh, get some good points there. But looking further back, we've also got Stuart Atkinson in fifth, uh, Robert Erling in sixth, with Magnus Hagner, Marcus Hagman sorry, in seventh place in those uh, Team Superior cars. Max Wright in eighth, with James Leggett ninth, Sam Reed in 10th place in the first of those Club 73 cars. Everyone else sort of staying as they were on the grid. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's really crucial to get a good restart here if you're Jim Flanagan because Michael Jones is going to be there ready and waiting for him to get going. Yeah, Michael Jones and Hyo Chang Lee will be looking to get there. And, and it looks like that the field has been spread out quite a bit, to be fair. Jim Flanagan is now coming up towards Dingle Dow and the cars behind the safety car, some of them are only just at Tadruids now, so a big line. It looks like there's some gaps actually that I can see in the field as well. Ben Hackerson just leaving the pits from having his repair. I see what's happened. The pace car hasn't picked up the leader. The pace car has picked up Trevor Blackburn it looks like. Oh, that is a disaster for Trevor as well he's down in 29th place at the moment. Uh, it's it's a disaster for him because those cars there who are who are stuck behind that pace car, they they're going to be well, they're going to be a lap down effectively when uh, Jim catches up. Yeah, it's very strange actually what's happened there. I think with the, the, the safety car going out before some of them had even crossed the finish line, that is going to be very interesting to see how that one pans out because you say that some of these drivers are going to be a lap down and. I wonder if it's because of how soon the, the safety car was scrambled out, but it had to be scrambled out. The, the stewards gave that decision, and unfortunately, it looks like some of the cars are going to struggle there. I wonder if there's any way they can wave them around or something, because I think that's a bit harsh, but 
I guess it's racing and these things happen. Well, Trevor Blackburn has gone past the uh, safety car now. So we've now got Charlie Richardson, uh, John Richardson's uh, teammate in the ARF car, now stuck behind the safety car. So it's a good, what, one, two, three, four, five, five cars stuck behind that pace car, but six cars even, with Ben Hackerson there as well. Uh, Alex Bristow, by the way, hasn't come out of the pits yet, so it looks like he may have had some sort of failure. Uh, well, you would think that we would be going green this time by, wouldn't you? Yeah, but uh, it's going to be interesting. It's something we haven't seen before, and I won't say it's a controversy, but it's certainly, yeah, it's not something I think I've seen before on iRacing, and... It's going to be interesting to see how this one sorts itself out. Where's the safety car now? The safety car is just going down the start and finish straight, so that stayed out enough a lap. So really, the, really we want to see um, the other cars getting past us now. Perry goes, uh, Charlie Richardson goes past. Is Perry Warburton going to go past now? Well, it's it's all it's all unfortunately. You know, as we say, there were still two cars behind where the safety car came out of the pits when the safety car was called so that's what's happened it's picked up the wrong cars unfortunately and that's what's causing this uh, little bit of a kerfuffle yeah the lights are out on the safety car as well so it's going to be coming in this lap so whatever the race the are going to decide to do and there's Warburton going past as well the safety car is going to come in this lap but this extended safety car is mean we're going to lose more time as well but it seems like the drivers that were stuck behind that safety car, one of them's gone off. The number 64 car, under safety car, into the barrier. And Ben Warburton. Yeah, Ben Warburton as well. Justin Bolle. So there's another one behind as well. This is extraordinary scenes here at Brands Hatch. And uh, you, you've got to think, all, all the cars are now going past the safety car. Although Ben Hackerson isn't going past the safety car. Uh, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think Ben Hackerson has been stuck behind the safety car once already today um, after that incident at the start. So he's now got caught up behind it again. He doesn't know whether to go past it as uh, as the leaders now have caught up to the safety car. So Jim Flanagan, has, after all of this, though, Jim Flanagan is in the lead of this race and he's going to have back markers to contend with if, if this is going uh, the way it is. Michael Jones is second, as we say. Hayo Chon Lee in third as well. Jim now just taking control of the field. You'd want to back them up a little bit just to give people a chance of catching up, but uh, yeah, it's all all important now. It's a rolling start. We've only got about 13 minutes left, so uh, it's basically, even though it is a sprint race already, it's even more of a sprint race. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how this one. I think there's going to be a lot of talk after the race about the safety car and what's happened, but now the drivers have got to forget about that. We're going to have a sprint race. Jim Flanagan goes round Clark Curve for the final Clark Curve and 30 to the final time. Pace car in, and now we are racing again at Brands Hatch with a reduced race. And Jim Flanagan gets on it straight away, so he's got a little bit of a gap over Michael Jones. Jones in second place with Hayo Chan Lee in third. He's looking busy already, is Hayo Chan Lee going looking round the outside of Paddock Hill Bend. Can he make it stick? He's staying with him around the outside, going into Druids. Will they be able to keep clear of each other? Yes, they do so far, managing to not make any contact. David Crozier is in fourth place. He's looking busy as well, but Hayo Chan Lee still looking on the inside of Michael Jones. But Jones manages to hold on to that place so far. Yeah, I don't know how long he's going to be holding it on for. Hyo Cheng Lee, very, very determined to get down to the 30s, onto the Grand Prix loop. Pitch. Hyo Cheng Lee on the inside, though. On the outside, Michael James fighting hard, and he'll have the inside line as they go down Pilgrim's Drop. As we go, yeah, as you say, down towards Pilgrim's Drop. Hyo Chan Lee is on the outside, going into Hawthorne. Will he make it stick? Yes, he does. Michael Jones deciding to, uh, maybe it's just best to just back off out of that. But of course, that brings David Crozier into the battle there for third place now. David, he's sniffing a good result for his team, the team Madge cars. And well, away they go up towards Dingledale and Sheen Corner as well. Michael Jones runs wide and that's going to let David Crozier through. Whoa, oh, contact. contact, but they've managed to keep going. As well, David Crozier manages to hold on to that good car control, managing to stay ahead of Michael Jones is behind them. There's a battle going on and now Michael, uh, Michael Ooh, Jones is falling down another place. And it's all oh. going on, it's a big contact and into the wall. Who was that that went into the wall? And more contact, Michael Jones. Oh, oh no. that's a huge oh, that incident. Is... 
that well how are we gonna we see might a see safety another, car yeah i think we might see another safety car cars all over the track when the club 73 cars involved there oh Roy Viverka going off as well oh it's just absolute disaster here at Brands but up front Hugh Chang Lee good try and make a move on Jim Flanagan going to Graham Hill quite can't make it stick there but Yo Chang Lee and Jim Flanagan battling half the lead and this race really has it's definitely not for not a dull race shall we say but Flanagan leads from Hugh Chang Lee David Crozier was third place and still is and Stuart Atkinson is fourth but unfortunately that incident there it just seemed like a, it just seemed like a lot of things coming together there and there's another move being made by uh, James Leggett James Leggett's gonna try and make a move on the 36 oh, contact there contact. again as well yeah uh, as well it's yeah. it's all happening in the second race here we often say the reverse grid brings some exciting racing and well we're certainly seeing that here as now James Leggett Flanagan's has gone wide and dingled down across the grass Hu Chung Lee's going to try and go around the outside, but Flanagan trying to make it stick around the outside, but Hu Chung Lee will have the inside line as they come down towards clearways. The third place car as well made the same mistake as Flanagan. That is now Stuart Atkinson, but Hu Chung Lee is going to try and take the lead, but Jim Flanagan around the outside has much more momentum, and Jim Flanagan's going to try and get that car in front of Hu Chung Lee before they get to Paddock Hill, but he's not quite going to have that luxury, I don't think, Flanagan, the Scottish driver. Oh! I don't think that's... Uh, oh, Flanagan's going to go into the wall hard there as well. No, he's managed to keep it out of the wall, but oh, that's allowing that's us to go past. How has he done that? I don't know. But uh, Ayo Chan Lee now into the lead of this race, rather robustly, shall we say, into the lead of this race. Stuart Atkinson is now second place in this race. Jim Flanagan only losing two places there, down to third place. But he, the red mist will certainly be descending there in that car. James Leggett now having a look down the inside side but not going to quite make it through how are some of our uh, leaders from the previous race doing well uh, let's have a look we've got Andrew Woodhouse is up to 12th place in this crazy crazy race although his uh, his face has taken a little bit of a battery there's a, car on the front the, there's a 35 car in the wall down the bottom of uh, Pilgrim's Drop up towards uh, oh and that's another car off as well and uh, well it's just crazy here Action all over the place. Who was that at the bottom of Pilgrim's Drop? Well, there's Dennis Sherp off in the gravel in Hawthorne. And it's crazy, but it's, it's, it's certainly exciting. Yeah, and we're into the second half of the race, of course, with it under safety car. And I think that incident between Hu Chang Lee and Flanagan, I think Flanagan probably probably maybe didn't know that Hu Chang Lee was as far across as he was. I think Flanagan was the one who moved over against the Hu Chang Lee. So we'll have to look at that one after the race, but it's Chan Lee who's come away from it with the lead, and you don't know where to look in this BSR TC um, in this Club Series race, but one thing I will say, I have learned from the BSR TC, is that you don't want to mess with an angry Scotsman. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's Jim Flanagan looking down the inside into Drew. It's late breaking, loses control. That's going to lose him enough of a place, is it? As down the inside goes, uh, who was that? That was James Leggett. So the, uh, the, in fact, you'd have to say that the three teammates are now in the lead of this race. The first three positions are covered by that team. Uh, who, uh, that's uh, what? That's uh, Power Slide what? Motorsports. Yeah. yeah. So Power Slide having a 1 2 3 and. Uh, They'll be, they'll be happy about that, but I think there's a lot more twists and turns to come yet in this one, Paul. Jim Flanagan losing yet another place now. Who's that going past? That's Peter Harrod going past in that Harrod's car. And, well, Jim Flanagan not giving it up, though. He's going down the inside of Hawthorne, going in towards Dickle down, down. Oh, and Harrod's just been pushed wide, and that's allowing Liam Atkins into the play now uh, with this battle. It's just... Breathless end to end battling all the way through this field. I could tell you that Magic Sakovic is down in 16th place. He hasn't really made too many positions. Michael Hall down in 19th place, but his teammate down in 21st. And we've got incidents happening all over the place. It's absolute chaos, but somehow Hayo Chan Lee is in the lead with Stuart Atkinson. Oh, and Jim Flanagan looking down the inside, looking like he was going to go into the pits. And now they're, they're, they're fantastic action. Flanagan is going to try down the inside backs and can't quite get that way. Well, there's contact there from behind, like from the 47 car of uh, Pete Harrod, but not 47. It's Liam Atkins in the 47 car. So Liam Atkins, who, first, who was in the mid-pack in the first race, although he was near the front for most of it, he's now 
into what it was sixth place when he crossed the line. It's now side by side with Howard and Andrew Woodhouse has made quite a bit of progress. Him and he's just behind Gosling and they got Max White in front of them. But at the front it is it's the slide sports at the moment with the one T three. Yeah, Power Slide Motorsports doing an excellent job, although Jim Flanagan's trying to see about that coming through. The left-hander of uh, Surtees down, Pilgrim's drop now oh. towards Hawthorne. God, it's four cars, you could put a blanket over them, but Flanagan has made it past. There's a little bit more contact there, you can hear it all happening. The, oh, I don't think there's a straight panel on any of these cars at all. Going through now towards Dingle Dell and up towards... Uh, the corner of Sheen and well it's just neck and neck between all these cars but well Jim Flanagan managing to make oh, it second to third and there's contact further behind who's that? Andrew Woodhouse has been turned around there as well by Max Wright and I think that uh, the faces of Andrew Woodhouse oh no they could really get hurt here and it's like he's uh, oh that's a big crash on the back straight there yeah, big crash going towards Clearways. Oh, who was that? Was one of the. Uh, was that Michael Hall getting involved in that as well? Our race one winner. Oh, no, he's managing to carry on, but he's got a lot of damage on the front of that car. That's about. That's a crash oh. trying to get into the pits. David Crozier has been disqualified, though. And I think one of the other cars involved was uh, Clinton Bell, but of this race, I wouldn't want to be the stewards after this one. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be uh, very busy after this race as Clinton Bell has got a lot of damage on his car. He's going to have to struggle the whole lap around with a very, very damaged car and that's ruined his race. Ian Roskell's got a very damaged car. As I say, I don't think there's a straight panel on any of these cars. Apart from the, the three power slide cars at the front, <laughs> well, Hugh Chung Lee and James Leggett anyway at the front too. And in fact, Stuart Atkinson's dropped down a lot since the start of the lap. He's now under pressure from Pete Howard as they go down towards Hawthorne. We haven't got very long to go in this race either. There's 15 minutes on the clock when Hyo Chang Lee crossed the line last time. So we've probably got about two laps to go after this one. And I think, <laughs> I don't know if I want it to end or if I want it to carry on the way it's going on at the moment. But at the moment, it's Adam Gosling is now going to try and go down the inside here. Stuart Atkinson is going to make that move stick as well. So Gosling up a position there. And this definitely, this reverse grid is definitely, oh, there could be more contact here between uh, Stuart Axe, that's Magic Sagowitz. Magic Sagowitz up to ninth place now. Season one champion, Magic Sakovic. But as I say, up front, it's Hayo Chan Lee. He's romping away with it 2.9 seconds ahead of his teammate, James Leggett. Jim Flanagan, though, he's still battling away with Liam Atkins, third and fourth, with Pete Harrod right on the back of them. And, well, everything's just calming down a little bit now, I think. Drivers have finally, you know, got, got themselves under control and uh, keeping things calm. There's only about two and a half minutes to go there, so... Uh, but I think we're going to see more action here, because Jim Flanagan defending from Liam Atkins there in third and fourth place. But Atkins got a good Atkins run. Atkins got a good run round the outside, and Flanagan will know to keep to the inside, and the bump touching, bit of bump hump in there, and that's wide. forced Flanagan to go wide there, so a little bit of a bump and run from Atkins, but Flanagan's going to keep the position, although as they come down towards clear A's and cart curve, I think Flanagan will keep onto it, you know. Yeah, he will. He's holding that inside line. Liam Atkins trying his best to get past. Jim Flanagan is behind them. Gosling uh, is also battling away with Pete Harrod as well. He's made a place up as uh, Gosling over Pete Harrod. But down the south finish straight now. And that's Magic. Is that Magic Sakovic having a look there? Yes, it is. It is. He's having a look down the inside of Pete Harrod. And that's yet another place now. He's up into P6. Sixth place for Magic Sakovic. And he can sniff a podium here because uh, Jim Flanagan and Liam Atkins. Magic Sakovic's teammate are battling away and that's slowing these guys up. Yeah, the top two have gone away. I think they'd be quite happy about that because behind it's like an all-out fight oh, and Atkins and Flanagan side by side. door banging action there. And Sakovic now going to try down the inside of Gosling, thinks better of it. But uh, Flanagan's run wide. Flanagan's run very wide, does Jim Flanagan, unfortunately. So that's going to allow a lot of the cars he was fighting to go past. Four of them have gone past him now, so. Flanagan's out of that battle, but I think there's definitely still some more uh, explosive action with those lot. And down the hill, we've got another two cars side by side. That is Neil Clark and that is Stuart Atkinson as well. But also Andrew Woodhouse there Andrew as well. Andrew Woodhouse in there as well. And his, his car, it's a bit of damage on the front, but other than that, it looks pretty okay. That's a good move there, Neil Clark, and they went through Westfield. Magic Sakovic down the inside into Sheen. Can he make it stick? There's a Oh, they don't quite make contact. He pulls out of it. That's some good driving. As you say, the awareness. Stewards. 
Absolutely as well. It's it's just been absolute action of these two racers. Hope you've enjoyed it here on Apex Racing TV as we're going on, as you say, the last lap. Hyo Chan Lee in the lead with James Leggett in second. Liam Atkins having to battle her way with Adam Gosling for third place. That final spot on the podium. Magic Sakovic from 27th on the grid has now made it up to fifth place. Pete Harrod, he's still in the battle for this. He's battling away in sixth place. Jim Flanagan. Oh, Jim Flanagan gets into the wall there's oh. contact there and flanagan well it's gone from bad to worse for flanagan he's out of that race and it's just it's all happened today uh, for him atkinson well it's and andrew woodhouse i think he's been disqualified as well yeah very unfortunate there i think flanagan made the same mistake he's gone wide at 30s and then that's, he's got a collision with a 77 car. But someone who's not had any contact with the this race, well, he had a little bit actually, Hugh Chung Lee, comes around 30s and clear away for the final time. And he's going to take the second race here in the BSR Club Series, the second race of the season. He's going to take it, and his teammate, James Leggett, will come across to take a second place as well. So a fantastic race for Power Slide Motorsport for the team's championship there. And further back, well, he finishes off a pool. Yeah, so Liam Atkins in third place. Adam Gosling have managed to hold on to that fourth place ahead of Majek Sakovic with Pete Harrod in fifth. Max Wright ended up in sixth place there with Neil Bamba in seventh. Stuart Atkinson, after that good initial showing earlier on, he uh, ended up dropping back to ninth place. Ian Roskell finished in tenth place. Neil Clark, eleventh with John Richardson, another one of the... Uh, the front runners from that race 28th up to 12th place so some good driving there from him neil rocks in 13th place dennis sherp in fourth place clinton bell is shown as 15th place with roy viverke in 16th charlie richardson uh, in 17th place after starting 33rd so good run from him jay wright ended up finishing 18th with trevor blackburn in 19th perry warburton in the uh, warburton sponsored car they finished he's finished 20th matt bunn in 21st tristan bodis after uh, a, a nightmare of a first round a first race he ends up finishing 22nd with michael hall with a very damaged car um part way through that race has finished 23rd philip johansson went shown as 24th by the looks of things and then your cars are one lap down uh jim flanagan 25th andrew woodhouse 26th michael jones in 27th place robert early in 28th place david crozier 29th uh, and these are all cars that are now uh, that we're saying are now ones that didn't finish the race marcus hagman sam reed christopher sherburn alex bristow benjamin hackerson Chaz Draker, Ben Warburton, they all did not finish the race and well that um, that was it was chaotic, it was manic, but uh, a good result for Hyo Chun Lee uh, Hyo Chan Lee, sorry, to uh, to win that that second race when everyone else around them were losing their heads. Yeah, the Cho Hyo Chun Lee and James Leggett both fantastic job and once they pulled away from the pack I think that was the best thing they could have done because behind you didn't know what was going to be going on because it just seemed as though as I said before I thought the second race was going to be exciting but it it uh, in some stage I think it just turned into pure anarchy unfortunately out there and I think that there'll be some talks about driver, driving standards and I think the problem with the safety car didn't help earlier it's been a very bizarre race I think you could say Paul yeah it's been a bit bizarre it was um certainly not an ideal start to the second round uh but you have to you have to be there to finish it and win it and uh higher chan lee certainly was the one to take advantage of that but uh i, I do have to say that uh massive shout out to uh Majek sakovic for finishing fifth in that race after starting 27th and obviously having to avoid quite a few of those um, of those incidents yeah, I think there's quite a few disqualifications as well in that race. I think Jim Flanagan and Andrew Woodhouse were two victims of the disqualification in the last lap as well. And this reverse grid race really it's livened up to the billing that we said it would do. And Magic Sacker, it's a great effort there to take fifth place. So I think he's definitely probably my driver of the round because he's had to come through a lot in that second race to get where he's got to. So... Fair, fair play to Magic there, he's definitely improved since the last time I saw him race. Absolutely, so what we're going to do now, I think, is 
just going to see if we can, uh, to say, see if we can get a word with our second race winner, Hayo Chan Lee, if we just see if we can bring him down here now, and, uh, and yeah, and as he joins us now, so Hayo Chan Lee, congratulations, fantastic win in the second round of this, uh, second round of the season, and, uh, your second win in this championship as well. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, I actually didn't expect a win this early on in the season, but uh, I'm happy. I'm pleased. Uh, you must be uh, pleased also that your teammate James Leggett finished second, get maximum points for your team. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, actually, I didn't know if I had to miss this weekend, but uh, supposedly it seems like I do. <laughs> so it feels great. And. You know, there, there was all sorts of chaos happening in that race, but uh, you, know, it, you must have been tough to, to keep cool and uh, to be able to battle for those uh, for those positions, especially with Jim Flanagan. Yeah, we had a collision in turn one. I'm still not sure uh, who was at fault there, but uh, I feel a little bad about it. I didn't want to compromise his race. Um, yeah, absolutely. You don't. You certainly don't like. Um, going past that way but uh, unfortunately you did but you, you ended up winning that race by uh, two seconds over your uh, your teammates so uh, puts you in good stead for the for the championship you know, uh, how do you see uh, your team going in the next round I mean we're moving on to uh, to Silverstone next aren't we so uh, that should be uh, do you enjoy the track or is it is it one that you maybe damage limitation <laughs> I like Silverstone, but uh, I'm not sure if I have the pace there. We'll see. We'll work together as a team and hopefully find a pace throughout the week. And I'm looking forward to it, uh, no matter what. Okay. Anyone that you want to uh, give a quick mention to? Uh, I'm just. Uh, I just want to say I I love this uh, league. Uh, a lot of great drivers, these drivers, and that's that's why I enjoy racing this so very much. Okay, and uh, Dan, anything else you want to mention? Yeah, I just think that you've done a great job there. You know, there's a lot going on behind you, but it just seems like that you got away from it. You had a good battle with Jim Flanagan, and from there on, you and James Leggett pulled away, and I think that's a very good start to the season for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I feel pleased at least about race two. Race one didn't, didn't turn out very well for me, but uh, race two, yeah, I, I can't complain. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Okay, so uh, that was Hayao Chan Lee uh, there, and what we're going to do, I'm going to see if we can uh, grab a word with uh, Majek Sakovic as well, because he had a lot going on in that race, so uh, just see if we can grab a word with him, and in fact here he is now. So Majek, uh, well, that was uh, an eventful second race after a, a good strong first race for yourself. Yes, that was very, very eventful. And uh, you, know, you, know, you looked like you had a, uh, just a little bit of damage. You didn't have uh, have too many contacts in that second race. You know, did you? You obviously managed to avoid the uh, the instance that happened. Uh, was there any close calls at all in that? Oh yes, plenty. Especially the one nearing the end of the race. I think it was lap nine. I had two crashes, one after another, which I just avoided. I don't know how. And then. I looked back on the replay and what happened behind me was just absolute carnage. I'm so lucky to get through that. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good start to your season, though. You are uh, the defending champion and uh, you, know, you must feel that, you know, that this good points hold for yourself will uh, put you in good stead to uh, try and keep hold of that championship. Yeah, I'm very happy with how today went. Two top ten finishes, that's something I'm not really expecting to get much more in this series because the level of competition is really high to be honest so to get that in round one is really great for my championship bet this season and uh, you know obviously uh, Liam Atkins uh, getting a podium as well your teammate uh, looking good for uh, for championship points there for the team as well in that second race yeah he did a stellar job I was really going for it and I'm really happy to see that he got the podium because he deserves it Dan? Yeah, I echo what Paul said really. I think you're a fantastic meeting for you there, Magic. And I've raced you before, and I've got to say that since I last raced you, a very big improvement. So, well done to you there, and I think you'll definitely be one to watch this season. Ah, uh, a bit of luck. A bit of luck, come on. But <laughs> it was. No, I've, I've got to say, this was a good round, but the rest of the season is an unknown. 
with this level of competition, I'm really expecting it. Actually, not. It's going to be a bit hard, this one. And uh, just finally, anyone that you want to give a quick shout out to? I guess my teammate and everyone who didn't try to crush me off. <laughs> Massive shout out to them. Well, thanks a lot, Magic, and a uh, fantastic first couple of rounds there uh, from yourself and from your teammates. So well done there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wonder if we can get Chas to come in, Paul, see what he thought of the uh, first meeting. Yeah, let's uh, just see if he's available. Uh, where's Chaz? There he is. Uh, let's bring him in here. And uh, so uh, we're joined now by Chaz, the uh, the series organizer there. And uh, what was the first season of the uh, of the second season of the BSR uh, Kia Club series? And uh, quite an eventful one as well <laughs> there going on. Uh, what was your thoughts on that? Well, this was a tough one, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, we were just saying then, I was just discussing with some of the guys that are on the chat, um, we're going to let the result of the second one stand because we were thinking obviously the safety car issue was something out of our control and obviously some people got caught up in it, me included, but at the end of the day racing's racing and it happens doesn't it, so it's a good win from here, we did a really good job, so we did James obviously, they were going to get a 1-2-3 at some point but I think Stuart dropped back a little bit. Um, it was great fun racing. I mean, race one was fantastic. I don't know if you got any of the battle with me and uh, Clinton yeah. and Johansson. It was yeah, just... we 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 got a, certainly got a lot of that battle. Just just going on to that first race battle, you know, um, it was all neck and neck between you and the uh, the Club Seventy Three guys uh, and, and, and several others as well. You know, how how was it for yourself? Because you looked to be just going a little bit backwards in that first race. Yeah, I've I've not really got the pace of some of the guys at front, admittedly, but. Um... It was it was good fun getting through. I, did, I think I just got a bit lucky with people getting in each other's way. So it was great to be up there. But um, yeah, Philip was quick. He, him and Clinton were really quick. But I think I was just helped out by getting stuck in the slipstream behind them. Uh, and yeah, so uh, you know, first round of the of the new season, we move on to Silverstone International Circuit. Uh, how how are your thoughts going into that round? Do you feel confident going into Silverstone? Um, well, safe to say I won't be calling a safety car that early next time, because um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much you saw of what happened with it, but basically I'd, I'd, I'd only just crossed the line when I got to the accident itself, and obviously I saw, I think it was Alex Bristow's car in the air, and I thought, well, that's not going to end well. Um, called the safety car out, and then it literally drove through half of the field and then slowed down, so people were getting told to let it pass, people were getting told to overtake it, and then Suddenly it was one lap to green and everyone was dotted about all over the place and then it kind of went out the window after that point. But it's like, like I say, racing is racing, it happens. And Everyone had good fun though, I was speaking to a few people just then and everyone seems to have had a good time overall, which is what I want. So it's a case of just move on, take it on the chin and get on with Silverstone. And It's a great track at Silverstone International, so it should be a good round. Absolutely, and uh, uh, Dan, anything you want to want to raise on this one as well? Yeah, as I say, Charles, the first race did extremely well, and unfortunately, the disqualification, Jay, you and Jay Wright, I love yeah. coming together there, so a bit unfortunate there, but I think the stewards going to be rather busy, that second race, uh, we didn't know where to put the camera, there was so much going on, but I think that's one of the great things about this series, that all through the all through the field, there's something going on. Yeah, it's a really mixed bag, actually, we've had, um, obviously, we had... Um... Who was it now? When uh, Chaotic Racing said they were bringing Michael Hall in, everyone just sort of went, oh dear, we're going to have to step our game up a bit here, because Michael, as you all know, is just, he's rapid, he's brilliant. Um, but it was, yeah, like I say, it's a really, really mixed bag, and it's great to be racing with everyone, because you never know what you're going to get. I mean, I was I was racing with Hio um, in like the pre-season for Season 1, and we are on the same sort of level, and I mean, now he won one of the pre-season races, and he's won tonight as well, so it's, it's just amazing to see how people have developed from season one it's great yeah and also with the reverse grid races i think they i think they're going to be definitely a standout in this season yeah it levels the playing field even more i mean obviously we run a fixed setup for everybody so that levels it as it is but having the uh, having the reverse grid's great because so many people get reversed because of how close all the racing is anyway it's uh, it certainly throws a spanner in the works well, absolutely. So, uh, you know, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was breathless for me to commentate on this. I know the same can be said for Dan. 
Um, it'd be a case of looking back at this and see what on earth happened because it was just action everywhere. But uh, you know, just finally, is anyone that you want to give a quick mention to? Um, I want to actually give a shout to James Leggett, to be fair, because he said that he wasn't going to be able to make it tonight because he was too busy watching ice hockey. But um, <laughs> he managed to get in in the end, and he actually pulled off a decent result. So fair play to him. It's uh, It's been good. But um, other shout-outs, probably Mike Jones. It's good to see him in the series. I know he used to do a bit of pro-series stuff. It's nice to have him around. Um, and obviously... The usuals, I mean, we've got our admins like Liam Atkins, Majek as well, who you've spoken to already, uh, Alex and uh, Matt from Chaotic Racing. They're all a good bunch, and obviously my teammate Ben, he's been he's been great, actually. He's helped me improve my pace a lot as well. Um, he obviously helped me get that qualifying time with a bit of uh, a bit of slipstreaming now and again. But he, um, he actually was telling me off the line, funnily enough, we were sat on the grid for race one, and he was just giving me a bit of a pep talk, and he was saying... Don't jump the start. Just keep your hand away from that gear <laughs> stick. It genuinely was saying, "Don't cut the, the don't don't cut the start. It'll be all right." And then I just heard this swear word come out, and then I just saw him fly past me down the side, and I thought, "Oh right, okay." <laughs> the irony. <laughs> but it was good fun. Being, it's good fun racing with Ben. We have a bit of a chat while we're racing around, and yeah, it's great. So probably more shout-outs than you wanted, but there you go. <laughs> no, it's all right, Chaz, you know, they all need to be mentioned. Well, well, thanks a lot for uh, for joining us in the commentary booth, and, no, uh, and sh- hopefully we'll uh, we'll speak to you again sometime uh, soon in the rest of the season. So, uh, Chaz Draycott, thanks very much. Thanks very much, lads. See you soon. Uh, I was going to see if uh, Woodhouse was available, Andrew Woodhouse, but um, it appears that he's uh, jumped off there. So, uh, so what we'll do is we'll leave it at that. And uh, well, Dan, as I said, as alluded to earlier, we'll move on to Silverstone International Circuit, and uh, it's quite a different circuit to this, but a lot wider. So we should see uh, plenty of side by side action. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more three wide action that we, we did see in stages today. A lot wider track, and Silverstone, I think, is a little bit, bit more quicker as well. So. That'll be something to look forward to next week as well at Silverstone, but it's going to take me a week to get my breath back from that one. That's a fantastic second race, and Yeo Cheng Li coming out on top, and what can any describe behind? It really was it, it was a bizarre race with a safety car, and then you had the, uh, as soon as the safety car ran out, it was a sprint race, and we saw the sprint race, uh, it definitely delivered, although some people may not have uh, enjoyed it as much as others I think there's quite a few incidents there unfortunately and I think Andrew Woodhouse's face might not have survived the second one as well as it did the first one unfortunately <laughs> absolutely um, we'll have to have a word with him next round uh, if he's around for that one but yeah so uh, so that's the end of that first round of the uh BSR Kia Club Series brought to you by Club 73 Karting and XL Designs I've been Paul Smith alongside me has been uh, has been Dan Blake and well we will join you next week for yet another round of this exciting championship here live on Apex Racing TV. Good night. <laughs>